My name is Anita Berger, and I am the principal of Benjamin Banneker Academic High School. My history of the school, I came to the school in 1993 as a teacher, moved up to assistant principal, and in 2005, started my principalship here. Okay, my students' proficiency in both reading and math, in reading it's 92%, in math it's 76%. Uh, we take testing and standardized testing, especially very seriously around here. Uh, I talk with my students about the data. The data is, it, it follows them. So what's in black and white should truly indicate what they're capable of doing. And I also have a, a group of awesome teachers who are somewhat relentless in making sure that student success is part of their success. So we put some systems in place, some after-school tutoring. We look at the interim data and we move students based on you know, every six weeks and, you know, provide them with the supports that they need, whether it's inside the classroom or outside the classroom. Do I believe I'm personally responsible for the academic growth? Let me, that's an excellent question. I know at the end of the day, I am responsible because I'm the leader of the school. As far as I think I just have some awesome people who are helping with that growth, uh, the academic growth. We do get students in who are, who have on paper at least, that they are capable of growing even more academically, but it's left up to us to push them even higher. So I have responsibility of that, but I ha also have the responsibility of ensuring that there's excellent staff and systems in place to make sure that happens. My academic expectations of my students is for them to really try hard, to give it their best, um, seek help when they need it, and to um, let us know and for us to be accountable to them as well um, to assist them and to make a partnership. And they're here to learn beyond the walls of Banneker. Uh, we want them to be college and career ready, ready, so therefore the expectation is for them to help us help them. I think what causes student achievement is both hard work and natural intelligence. Um, natural intelligence, it, it's pretty easy, but we also get students that work hard, and I call them our pluggers. And so when you have the combination, of course, it's a perfect combination, but it takes both. And sometimes you may not have the natural intelligence, but if you have the work ethics and the determination and the motivation, it happens. So I take a personal approach of how I keep track of my students academically. Uh, I usually sit with the counselors and figure out who is not where they need to be. Um, and most of the time I end up coming to them first because as soon as the uh, progress reports are out or the report cards out, I literally look at all of them. And I want to see who's doing what they need to do and what who's not. And then finding out why, because sometimes it's not just what's happening in the classroom, but we also want to provide supports outside of the classroom to, you know, those social emotional supports to make sure that things are happening for them to, to make sure that they're successful at the end of the day. My behavioral expectation of my students, they are pretty much, they drive the behavior culture around here at Banneker. They, we have developed a good relationship and they will tell me if there's something that occurred in social, on social media or if there's something that maybe one group of students are doing. But the behavioral expectation is for them to be accountable for one another. And so we've really pressed that issue around here, to be accountable for each other's behavior. And we build relationships. They will knock on my door and say, Ms. Berger, guess what? There's some freshmen doing X, Y, and Z. And you know we don't do that here. So they kind of drive the behavior culture around here. I enforce rules around here at Banneker by, first of all, um, you know, sometimes looking at why they break the rule. And um, again, building relationships is probably the, my biggest uh, takeaway from being here. 
the rule breakers have to answer to me, and I always tell them they get one. They get one for the year. And so we really don't have a big problem with that, but sometimes they make mistakes. Like one day the, a kid used a door he wasn't supposed to use. So I gave him his one, and he was... He was lucky. He, you know, he said, oh, thank you, because he didn't want to come to the principal's office. But I build relationships with them and sometimes find out why they break the rules. Um, it's not always because they mean to break the rules. So. I reward good behavior by, one, uh, letting them know that I understand, that I do, and I have noticed that they have changed their behavior and that they are making a difference. And we talk about, you know, maybe not going to the trash can five times during one class period, but maybe going four and each day working, you know, towards, um, you know, being more accountable for their own and managing their own uh, self-behavior. And so um, the reward is, you know, little things like, I might let them leave two minutes early or, you know, it's funny because we, we, we don't have outdoor um, uh, lunch. So sometimes I will take them on a playground where that's right at the rear of the school and says, oh, we're going to have recess. And they think about recess in high school, but they love it. So little things are, are, um, make a big difference in terms of rewarding their behavior. Absolutely. I do believe I am personally responsible for the professional development of our teachers. Of course, the system provides like a system-wide professional development, but no one knows the teachers the way I do. And being here, uh, my teachers, there's a, you know, my retention rate is really high with teachers here. So I really know some of their um, best practices and some practices that need to be improved. And so what I try to do is craft personal professional development for each teacher and just personalize it because if they're doing something awesome, I want them to continue to grow in that area. So, and that is a reality. There are teacher vacancies there, um, here at Banneker at times. And the way I recruit is first of all, I get the personnel committee uh, who is a group of teachers, and we discuss uh, what you know what we're looking for in a teacher that is that it's um, maybe a vacancy, and then we we try to seek out first their professional, uh, I guess their their, their clientele, their, their colleagues that they know, and then we we you know we use the system to see you know their recruitment, but we also do a lot of networking on our own. Um, Banneker is a, a different place to work. Um, it's a hard job sometimes because you have to push highly successful students to become even more highly successful. So our recruiting and our retaining teachers, uh, the retention rate is really important. Um, and I find that sometimes the teachers are the best messenger of that. It's not all, always the leadership team to do that, but they are very much of the process, the teachers who have been here for a while. Um, I evaluate my teachers by, first of all, using the system-wise impact uh, system, but also we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conferences, and um, when I do, I call them little drive-bys, and I stick my head in their classroom and do some instructional walks that are not uh, formalized, but just to highlight some of those best practices and then say, you know, this is a wonder, you know, I wonder why you did this or did that, and usually those little small conversations really help when it's the real formal observation. Um, and they're very, very engaged when it comes to that. And they, they want to be successful. So it's a partnership. So the way we engage parents here, we start with our summer program, which is a part of our ninth grade um, transition program. It's a bridge program. And we emphasize how important it is that parents don't just drop their children off in August and pick them up in, in June. And so we start by having ninth grade parent um, meetings, and then monthly we have parent collaboratives. So that's a time in which they can informally talk with the, their child's teachers and, you know, the administration and anyone who they feel needs to be talked with, like, once a month. Um, we also are, are really... Uh, partners with the parent-teacher organization. So we have an excellent parent-teacher organization. I 
I, you know, usually I'm a parent, so I, I make myself available to talk to parents as needed. And um, some are more important than, than others. But I also know if a parent walks in the office, it's something important to them. So I have to understand that. And I try to stop, drop everything and listen to wherever their need is. And if it requires more than the time I have, we, we make an, an arranged appointment for that.